Hello there, uh, this is Let's Knit Together and you might be wondering why Nettie and I are sporting a pair of socks. Well, we've got a fascinating stitch for you, for you now, really fascinating. Um, it's a stitch that's um, to join, give a seamless join, said to be invented by Lord Kitchener. Who was second, and history. And, yes, exactly. <laughs> and history to it. Um, uh, Secretary of State for the war in World War I. And this um, is uh, meant to reduce chafing in knitted socks. Yeah. Well, you have no chafing because it's seamless. Absolutely right. I love that. Hashtag great um, pub quiz. <laughs> question two and answer. Right, so tell us about it more, Nettie. Yeah, it's where you might actually end up with um, you know, uh, you can imagine a sock, you're but working in the round or a pair of mittens and you've got this section where you've got two sets of live stitches that you want to join, but you don't actually want that, you know, niggly seam mm. at the very end. Yeah. So we are not going to be doing knitting as such, we're going to be doing a bit of sewing. So I've got my representation of uh, what might be the tops of a pair of socks. Okay. And I, so I've got my wrong sides together in this yes. instance. Yes. Um, and by and tops you mean sort of the toe? The toe, yeah, the toe. Um, and the other thing to just say is that you could have a yarn end that you could use to do this, but I'm going to use um, a contrast yarn in a nice big um, darning needle okay. with a blunt end so that I can work through my stitches because I'm going to kind of use this um, in sort of a knitting motion basically to create the v-stitches that will then zigzag okay. across the top here. Um, and is this the kitchener stitch? There's sort of two-step uh, uh, process actually, a two-step technique, because first you have to join these side, the very first stitches, and then you work along. So there's a joining stitch and then there's a regular kind of way of working okay. back and forth across your, your front needle nearest you and your back needle furthest away from you okay. um, and I'm going to tell you a cheat I've done as well that you might want to bear in mind so I've actually changed needles to a slightly smaller size to make it easier to get my knitting uh, my tapestry needle through so that just gives me a bit more wiggle room okay great and it's not going to affect anything in terms of the size oh. of the loops because they've already been made on your regular knitting needles. Lovely. Um, but you can imagine this, and so I've got also here, I've got my two tips um, at the same end, just because if I was on a circular needle, that's actually how it would look. Okay, so we're going to do my joining stitch first. Step one. Step one. We're going to start at the front, and I'm holding my two needles together and kind of fairly parallel, and I'm going to purl like a purl motion from the back through to the front. And I'm going to leave a long enough tail to be sewing up with. And then I'm going to go under my needles and I'm going to knitwise insert my tapestry needle through the back, first back stitch and just pull those two together. And you can see how when that's all sort of tightened up, mm -hmm. twiddly twiddle. That is then my joining stitch. Okay. Okay. So now I've got a bit of an, uh, a regular kind of motion that I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back to my front stitch and I'm going to go back to my first stitch, in fact. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm going to insert my needle knitwise and I'm actually going to slip this first stitch off. So you can actually work much closer to the tips here. So I'm just going to use my fingers. And now I'm going to insert my tapestry needle purlwise into the next stitch on my front needle. So that's from back to front. I'm now going to move to my back needle and insert my tapestry needle purlwise into the first stitch here. So again, that's back to front and slip that off. And before I move back to my front needle, I'm going to insert my tapestry needle knitwise, so front to back. So the basic sort of motion is front needle, knit, slip off, then purl. Right. And then the back, you move to the back needle and you purl, slip off, 
knit. A knit, gosh, yes. So I'm just going to do a few and you can just follow that through. Because yes. it's a, it's one of those things that you kind of have to find your own way. I was just going to say, it's a bit of a mental in your one. Brain. But, yeah. but once you, for me, I'd probably actually have it written down. Yes, I'd like it me. written down in and front so of me at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that I would find that easiest. Yeah. And I think then once you've got into the rhythm of it and you're used to doing it, it will come quite naturally. Yeah. But initially, you've got to be very careful, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. So you're working two stitches and then you, so front needle, then back needle. Yeah. So what are we doing? We are going to... Front. We're going to knit, knit slip off, pearl. pearl. Don't slip off and pull that. You don't have to pull it tight straight away, but after a few stitches, you'll want to. Yes. So and then, then back needle is pearl slip off and knit. Knit. It's a very useful, Julie. I think I'm going to need you when I have to finish my socks. So what next? Front again. Mm -hmm. And we're going to knit, slip off pearl. And then we're going to go to the back and go pearl, slip off knit. So if I just have a little tighten up of those two and uh, move these, you can see uh -huh. how that is actually forming. Yes. And if I can just feel it, yes, no seam. I mean, done it. no chafing. Well, and you can see it kind of gets easier as we go along. Oh, I'm yeah. quite pleased with that. That's looking <laughs> pretty good. And I think this is a good point to say that um, you can see how sort of tightening your stitches um, as you go is quite useful. You might yeah. need to just use your fingers or use um, another spare tapestry needle just to pull it through. So you want it to really match. I'll get my fingers out of the way in a sec. You want it to match the stitches that are there already, because again, when you're working with your matching <laughs> yarn, Excuse me. Um, it's going to be um, much easier to see another good use for a tapestry needle. Very good. Um, so is this the complete kitchen of stitch? Yes, it? it is basically. Right. So you work that sequence all the way through to okay. the end and then you'll slip off your last needle here and then you will just insert your tapestry needle down through the last stitch and then weave in your, you can tie a little knot and then weave it in. And if we have a little look at the other side, you can see how if that was the same colour that that would, you know, be invisible. Be really. invisible. Yeah. And, you know, again, that is seamless. There's yeah. not like a ridge or anything like that that you can that you sometimes get um, with certain patterns. Everyone's different. It, it might be absolutely fine, you mm. know. But mm. so this is just again, say mittens and toes is quite useful if your pattern calls for it. So I'm just going to carry on here now. I'm comfortably doing my Kitchener stitch. We've got down to our last two stitches, mm -hmm. and so I've just purled through the back needle there, and so for the last one, I'm just going to. Um, knit and slip that off, put that needle out of the way, and then just go down through the middle of my last stitch and that is it all done basically. So we just sort of, you can straighten that out and you can sort of see how that's all um, ended up really quite neatly there. Wow. And I would just weave my end in as normal. Fantastic. Thank you, Nettie. Thank you, Lord Kitchener. Nettie, your country needs <laughs> you. Sorry.